Hey guys, all right, we have another Bao Daily Recap, uh, January 9th, 2019. And the description today is Bao traded two tickers. First one, he traded Atos, A-T-O-S. And in this video, he talks about identifying the lines, when to go short and when to go long. The next one is AXSM that ran recently. Day three and how to play SSR and the SSR trigger. All right, guys, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to Daily Recap. Today is Wednesday, January 9th, 2019. So the market's been pretty slow for small caps. What do you guys think? It's pretty slow, huh? It's uh, so, as I said in my IG Live, man, when, when things are slow like this, you have to be more careful because there's not many opportunities where you can make back your loss if you do lose. And when things are slow, what happens is the algos take over because liquidity is gone. They control the game. They are most of the liquidity. If, if no one touches the button, they're the algos that are fighting one another back and forth. And these algos are quick, dude. They, they, they do illegal manipulation in which the government lets them because the government's kind of stupid. Uh, they call it spoofing and putting up fake shit. Like, I mean, come on, man. You put 50,000 shares and then you know you don't want to fill it. And then when it comes close, they, they pull it. You know, it's just those algo kind of games. Spoofing games, manipulation games. So you don't want to be caught in that during the, uh, the periods where there's slow time. So how you avoid that, in my opinion, is just avoid the noise. And that's why I came up with the method of the lines uh, where the line – themselves become the areas of interest and just focus around those areas of interest. And in, in, in between, I call them noise. It's like, you don't even have to worry about the, those areas. Cause like, dude, they, they just move up and down and stuff. Right. So, so let's start. Um, yeah, man, back in the day, people would just click buttons. They don't know what the hell they're doing. It's like they buy low and they sell high. I mean, that's the cool concept. Let's buy this shit, momentum, all that shit. But, but, but there's a reason to this madness, you know, it's like, dude, these lines are basically resistance and support lines. And they are formed based upon data. Data is the prints that occurred in the past. You can call that reading the tape, dude. People talk about reading the tape and all this stuff. I don't even need to do that because it's all inherited, inherent in, in the lines itself. Because those are the previous prints. Those are the, that's what happens. Every time it prints, that's data. And data goes into the resistance and support lines. That's how you form those resistance and support lines. So uh, don't get caught up in this reading tape thing. I mean, that's, uh, what if you read it wrong, dude? You know, like, oh, I just learned how to read Chinese. So now you, you, you know, you tattoo some love symbol, Chinese love symbol in your arm. It turns out to be pig. Who's that? You know, it's like, that's what happens. You know, you see a lot of like dumb Americans go to China and get a tattoo and Chinese thinking it's something else and then, and then the guy gives them a different character, right? You know, you see that kind of stuff all the time. So reading tape is, you can read anything you want, guys. You can read, you know, like, oh, there's, there's the algo. Oh, there's a diluter. There is the guy that's supporting it. You know, like, man, in my opinion, guys, don't, don't try to read Chinese. Um, if you're an expert, that's a different story. But if you just learn how to read Chinese, don't be fucking reading novels and shit in Chinese, you know, just stick to the, the children's books. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, this is what we did. So every day we do the same thing. So I'm going to go through the same methods I, I, that I use to trade, right? So we go through a scanner. I look at the scanner and see what's going on. And then based on the scanner, I start drilling in and finding information about that stock. So today, what was on scanner was ATOS. So once again, let's go through the same methods that I use. Remember, guys, this is how I do things, okay? Everyone does things differently. I mean, I'm not the best, but I'm just showing you what I do. And hopefully, you pick up pieces of information that helps you with your own trading strategy. I'm not here to tell you to copy my strategy because it's the best, because it's definitely not the best. I screw up every single day, guys. But you know what, man? Between us, we, we, have, we share information. We figure out different ways and tackle it. And these strategies change over time. Algos get smarter, man. If you're training the same style you're training for the past 20 years, it's not cutting it anymore. But you know what's, what's good about the lines? It's, it's been solid for decades, uh, centuries. Um, Sam found 
the lines all the way back in the 1900 with the Peter Wyckoff, right? I mean, dude, it's crazy. It, because it's basically the, the simplest technical analysis you can get, resistance and support. You can't, I mean, this is the, the easiest, the simplest thing you can do for technical analysis. Once you learn the basics, of course, you can go back and get a PhD and a master's degree and add your own indicator, more complex indicators. But for me, man, as a simple day trader, guys, at this level, this is enough for now. You will learn more as you get along and you implement it yourself. But I just want to teach you the simple lines, right? And so let's, let's figure this out. That's how we uh, looked up and let's figure out the research. So ATOS. First thing I always look at is the float, dude. The float determines how aggressive I could be with my orders. If it's a large float, large as in well over 10, 000, uh, 10, 10 million, and you also have to look at the price, dude, though. You have to look at the market cap. Because like, it just because it's a certain float doesn't mean it's you know thick or not, right? You have to put everything in perspective. But for me, five million is a very small float. You have to be very careful because the range can go up a lot. So I'm looking at this. I'm just reading this information, institution owned. So in my head, this may be right or wrong. This is just the way I do it, like a rough ballpark, right? I start subtracting these numbers from the float. This is the worst case scenario I can get. So there's 4 million left, there's 3 million left. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? But the point is it's small. You don't need to know the exact number. You just need to know it's small. It's like 4 million left or something like that, 5 million. And then you look at the volume traded. It's, it's, it flipped three times, dude. So it's a game of hot potato, right? So the flow's been rotated three times. And so it gets me, you know, so when I see this volume, it's like half a million in the beginning. It's like, it gets me excited. I'm like, dude, the stock was trading 123 and this morning it was like 170. It gets me excited. I'm like, holy crap, there's meat on the bone. So the, the second thing I always do is I, I go and look up the filings just to see there's first, well, I look at the news to see why the news up. I'm like, oh, cool. Phase one, <laughs> I like the phase one bullshit. Um, phase two, <laughs> two, you saw what happened to AXSM, man. You know, you don't want to be touching phase two stuff, man. It's, it's, I've lost so much money. Most of my losses have been phase two. We don't, we, we're not going to get into why maybe later, but I, I mean, I'm not an expert on this enough of, it's just phase two is like, and, and what's good data date phase two. It means it's, it's getting kind of legit, man. The companies get kind of get legit. And so they need more money, of course, for the phase three. And so you start slamming it, shorting, thinking that it's big dilution, and then you get caught. But we'll talk about that when we get to the AXSM. So, you know, you read this stuff. It's like, okay, phase one, successful. Successful versus starting. So there's another keyword. This, this one at least is done. Uh, a lot of these pure trash ones are it's starting phase one. So when you hear the words like, oh, it's beginning or it's defining, you know, the new trials, the new phase one, it means like they didn't even do it yet. They need money. So the more of these press releases you read, you don't need to read it, everything. You just skim it for, I call it buzzwords. As long as, you know, you, you read buzzwords, you know, like uh, the start of the, uh, just, just all this like orphan drug, you know, just, just basically keywords that, that paint you the picture. So uh, the, the best scenario would be, oh, they're, they're beginning or they just submitted an application for phase one. That means that they're like so far away. They need to raise money, you see what I'm saying? So, you, so in this case, so they're like successful. Like don't need a word. They basically, the word you're looking for is completion at least, right? So, but now you know that they complete phase one, they, they need money for phase two. So the, the, those are the things that, that, that go through my head. And so then I look up ATOS into the filings. It's been a while since it did any sort of dilution, right? So then I talk to Chicago <laughs> and he goes, there's no dilution. So that confirms it. So you see what I'm saying, man? So I'm not the expert on filings. I'm a very good technical trader. I can see the picture. I, that's the thing. You can't be the best in every single thing. I mean, I, 
I can spend my whole lifetime just learning filings or I, or I just pick up enough basics. So thank you, Chicago, Matt, for creating the videos. So he's creating a video series for us on how to read these filings. You, you guys got to watch it. Dude. It's for members only. And it's, it's amazing, dude. So, I mean, this is, this is what MIC is about. So I think, I think Chicago trader Matt for helping us out uh, with these videos. Cause now we can at least learn how to read them. Right. I mean, shit, dude, for a long time, I was blind. I didn't know any of this stuff. Oh crap. ATOS. So now the, the, the resistance would be here. Oh shit. I forgot to cancel it. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. This is what I call house cleaning. I had a order at 175, a small buy, and I, I thought I canceled it before the daily recap, but that's fine. Um, I'm just going to place this cell somewhere. Support B160. So this is good. So let's, let's see. Let's, let's bring up big charts and figure out how I figure out the lines. Housekeeping is important, guys. You have you have to make sure you don't have open orders, man. I, I I do this all the time. I get so lazy and forget sometimes, and just, then you lose unnecessary money that you know. So the way I drill out is I always start with a year at least, so I get the big picture of how the stock is moving. Then I zoom in. I'm like, dude, this thing is getting like killed, diluted all the way down. This is a piece of shit, obviously, right? It's a pig. Then I keep drilling down until I, until I see areas of interest. That, that, that. So now I'm getting to the six months. I'm thinking, oh, $2 is a great line, guys. See that? So then I'm drilling it further because I'm looking at the last time. I always want to know what the last time it ran, what it did the last time. <laughs> 